respectfully and faithfully accept the uh, the teachings. Uh, let's look at the initial verse. We must discipline ourselves. Uh, do not flaunt our wisdom of power or arrogantly slight others by not replying when they ask. And so this part about the discipline. Um, okay, what, why does this mention in here is it's about, um, you know, sometimes Master mentioned about noble beings, right? Uh, these are the traits of a noble being. Okay, a noble being is one. So what did this traits mean discipline, not to flaunt arrogantly slight others? As a noble being is one who is humble, is gentle, is simple, is charitable, is hospitable, and therefore all these five virtues culminates to become a noble being. And that's why uh, what it is. If we conceal the meaning of principles or teach the Dharma backwards, a slight new learnings, we are not correctly accepting the Dharma's teachings. So the Dharma actually teaches us to have the good character. So by doing all these things, we are not actually applying this, the teachings in our life. So the, again, go back to the whole purpose of cultivation is to change our conduct. When we change our conduct, one of the things, remember the three things that I say, you want to summarize what the teaching teaches, three things, stop doing evil, do only good, purify the mind. So when we purify the mind, we will accept the Dharma and that will be imprinted in our heart and in our mind. So therefore, this inevitably will result in the change of your conduct and change of character and all these things you wanna be doing. So um, in uh, Master's explanation, we must take an effort to constantly remind ourselves to be virtually and disciplined of ourselves. We must not believe that our wisdom is advanced, that we are very capable and so on and so forth. The, now we know that um, the supreme wisdom is as vast as the universe. If you have a chance to look at the composition of the earth in relation to the universe, and if it's in the context, it's smaller than a mote of dust. So therefore, it, we, can, we do not even know everything in the world. So we let alone everything in the universe. So therefore, um, the, what we know is infinitely small compared to what the supreme wisdom is. So for that, um, that's why the noble ones uh, always start with the virtue of being humble. So we must constantly be gentle and broad-minded. By sharing what we know with others, we can create good affinities with them. And this is what we are supposed to do. I mean, this body is our power. We go amongst the masses and the world and the masses to create good affinities. So therefore, if you then look back what you have done in the past, you look at what you have in this life, what sort of affinities you have in this life. And the fact that you have the affinity to join this path with so many in the family of practitioners, obviously you do have good affinity. But the thing is, in the, upon this life, we think upon this life to cultivate stronger and greater uh, affinities. So when we know good principles, considering them as the wrong thing to do, and uh, we must be very precise in our sharing. So precise in our sharing, and if you remember some time ago, I mentioned to you all, practice into precision, precision practice. And this is exactly what it is. I'm glad Master brought this point up. So one time when Buddha was at Jetta Grove, and this was about um, uh, because of the looks of the Sangha member, he was being looked down upon. But then Sakamuni Buddha pointed out that he has already attained the fruit of our hardship. Now, therefore, in again, I, I'm just sharing my personal uh, practice and personal experiences. I will respect anyone who is in in the rope. But um, obviously there are always in this time, there are people to say that, oh, maybe you're not practicing right and so on and so forth. The fact of the matter is, I will show them my respect. 
but and also what's why is it important to understand this uh, ara hardship is because if we slander uh, slander a uh, one who has attained a um, certain level of ara hardship in enlightenment and even to a sangha member the the karmic uh, retribution is very great so therefore we got to be very mindful so respectfully and faithfully accept we only follow the buddha's words we follow the sutra and so um, and so on and this is the department only because it's the buddha the dharma and the sangha so the sutra is the dharma so therefore we must also respectfully um, um, be respectful when we listen to the dharma and um, i always tell my home sister that when it comes to dharma whether it's in sutra and whether to any books that relate to dharma we must respectfully uphold that book okay and not to leave it on the floor and we have, we still have to be faithful accept and practice the teachings after listen to it do it we must practice according to the teachings and that's why when you practice, practice according to the teaching inevitably your conduct your character will change so um, we cannot attain entrance to ultimate reality through our own wisdom so this wisdom obviously then therefore this wisdom that we can cultivate a lifetime of the lifetime listening to the dharma and listen to dharma adopt it and go to the stage of realization and the realization that to be attained by your own by your own with the guidance of the master so by listening to the sutra and that's the reason why um when you create um, remember i mentioned about affinities so when we build these affinities when you practice and you get to a higher higher level of practice teachers will come and the masters and the gurus will come and guide you and so therefore this is why uh, when in our practice why in a mahayana path we create these affinities and they come and guide you at a spiritual fingers kavyana mitra um guides guardians teachers or gurus so we must mindfully comprehend and attain the state of pure mind that we able to truly see the path and as we practice when we purify our mind we purify our mind will inevitably will change your conduct so when you continue to change your conduct and and continue to do that your mind will be clearer and too and then we sometimes we see two ways to have a worse and and because we are illusory we take the wrong path and that's when we are in the great danger and takes long time to come back it takes many many life time to come back on the right road and a good good example is devadatta um he can be following uh, to pop by has some purify the mind so some people have shallow wisdom and cannot yet realize but they have faith so we must not look down and those with the right faith and step guide them patiently so the lessons learned um if people do not have faith and we share many things with them we will actually we take a karma speech which i just mentioned and we slander the karma in um really a severe karma kind of attribution um so in for me i a way i practice is that if i know that person uh has is afflicted and will not accept the dharma uh, i don't i don't talk about it because uh, if i do he or she may slander what i say so that i'm mindful to keep my mouth sh- shut for that reason and reason is not the whole bag what i know but i don't want him or her to slander uh, the dharma so learning the the uh but as teaching should not lead us to flaunt our wisdom or power as as i said in the beginning and this and this is not to show how much we know but the purpose and that that's the reason why um in the very early teachings and masters say have a body cheat of mind if you remember that some some time ago so therefore the body cheat of mind will have always the body cheat of intention and if the body you jira intention you have the right frame of mind to share or not to share 
and sometimes uh, not you, you have, may have to share a little because depending on the capabilities of the listener. So if we know people, or people who are seeking teaching, we should probably share teaching with them. We should be the unsummoned teachers and not look down upon them. You know, I have um, yesterday, uh, on diligence day uh, in the breakout group. Uh, I was under Sister Michelle's group. And one of the topic we discussed, and I, and I, I brought this uh, matter up, it is unsummoned teachers. And to me, this unsummoned teachers, uh, there is two words that to me, I think has contained very profound meaning. And what do you mean by unsummoned teachers? They, um, so I, and I think we don't have time to discuss about this, um, but maybe you should contemplate um, what you do you what it means by summon teachers certain contemplation a farmer never complains about the land in which he plows for he is skillful whether the, the land is tough uh, hard or whatever he plows the land because he know the skills of how to soften the land and how to nourish the land so a spiritual culti a skillful cultivator practices in the land of cultivation uncomplainingly so, um, Master uh, once said, I remember she said, she, didn't, she doesn't pray for a, for a smooth path. He prays to have um, the tenacity uh, and the diligence to cultivate. And this is what we should be. So whatever light coming to come to us, we should accept it uncomplainingly. But we know how to purify our mind as a result. Therefore, we need to cultivate with faith. They, because why faith? Because we know that this is the right path and it's a true teaching. So knowing that the blossom of fruition will be worth your efforts because, at the, because with faith, you know you have, at the end of that uh, practice will lead you to attain enlightenment. So the Buddha has shown the way and but there's a way to enlightenment. So the destiny is radiant, radiant because you will not at the end of it. The, the darkness in our life that we go through in, from samsara, from samsara to the shore of enlightenment, it will be bright. Just like the rising sun at the horizon that we see, as light descends on the world of darkness. And that's why we, enlightenment is attained. So on relationship, faith in a relationship. Transform faith to faith. I, I think I shared some something very similar to this line before, but now said in a different perspective. Very often, um, you know that um, sometimes uh, in my practice, I do come up with people who talk to me about the relationship. That's why I, I would dare I share with you about the contemplation relationship. So I'm fated, okay, this is my spouse, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, maybe there's some consensual retribution that you have that. But if you accept as well, you then do nothing about it and become a faith. But you can transform the faith to faith if you do something about it. And that's what practice is about. So faith makes your destiny possible. If you lead your destiny to faith, then if we're going to be fated, the disaster, it will be disastrous. Um, and um, if not, um, it can change. And that is what faith is about. So, so when you have the faith, you have the hope. Or puts your efforts together and you're going to change that and change about self and change about conduct, change about mind. And then how to do that? You have love. Love because love then it makes your journey beautiful. Okay. Brother and brother, sister, thank you. Our summon teacher, Brother Chin, for this to share with us the fragrance of Dharma, your great insight. Yes, uh, before we release uh, Brother Chin and Sister Kaping, uh, yes, good reading.